who see in organizing on climate change said, the real contest is not between Democrats and Republicans, but between human beings and science. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the last three years have been the hottest years in the history of this planet since temperatures have been recorded. In Basra, Iraq, last year, they recorded a high temperature of 129, and there were fatalities. Sea level rise is happening. The polar caps are melting. We face here in the Monterey Bay ocean acidification and asphyxiation, hypoxia, that affects all sea life. Mm -hmm. We can reverse these trends, but we're behind the eight ball right now. California leads the nation and the world in our efforts to reduce CO2 emissions, but it's still not enough. The California State Senate passed a resolution last session urging the U.S. Congress to pass a carbon tax as a way to put the tax on those that are producing carbon, um, as a way to really reduce the production of carbon as opposed to just charging at the tail end as we do through cap and trade. This moves it up to the front end. But now we have an administration full of climate deniers. The man who took the oath of office today has said it's a hoax perpetrated by the Chinese. The man who's under hearings to become Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson, the head of Exxon, and that company and that industry, like the tobacco industry, has known for years, if not decades, of what their products, what their exploration, what their exploitation of Mother Earth is doing, and they're still chasing the short-term profits. The EPA nominee, Scott Pruitt, distinguished himself as Attorney General by bringing lawsuits against the EPA. And Oklahoma still has suits against the EPA, and he said he will not recuse himself uh, should he be confirmed as head of the EPA. So what many of us might have thought was a joke or a hoax in the candidacy of, of this person who took the oath today, um, it is real, and it is brought home very strongly when we look at this cast of characters uh, being put in charge of departments that they either sought to abolish or don't believe in their very enforcement role, which is designed to protect the health and safety of all of us. And they're now in position to try to erode that net of protections. Our advocacy is more crucial now than ever before. I've heard of people talking about secession. Well, California, we should just secede. You know, we have the power, we're the sixth strongest economy in the world. But I counter that, I, I get the sentiment. But no, we should take our country back. We should take our nation back. Let me just close with a prescription to add to others, a prescription for peace, equality, unity, and justice. Government at best moves incrementally. And if we move incrementally with climate change, we lose. We need, as Mary Adams said, we need for the people of our communities, of our county, our state, our nation, and our planet to force governments to do the right thing. They won't do it on their own. Just as corporations didn't put seat belts in cars or, or safety bags or car seats, it was government. The Clean Air Act, actually signed under President Nixon, the air is cleaner in LA today than it was in the 1960s. It wasn't corporations, it was government protecting the health and safety of the people. So the person who took the oath today has suggested that there's been a disconnect between government and the people, and that he represents that reconnection with the people. And yet, the over 14 million, or closer to 20 million, who've gotten health care, not a perfect system. I still favor universal health care, single-payer system. <laughs> The reality is we have to fight to protect those 
who today have health care access, who have the ability to pay for life-saving prescriptions today because of the Affordable Care Act. And we need to work to build on that, not dismantle that. Um, and just to close, um, what, again, on the climate change, the connection to our local communities, we, the people in this room, passed Measure Z. Yeah. Over, I know, I look around so many people that were instrumental and leaders in that movement. Chevron could not defeat the people with over $3 million or closer to $4 million, who knows what, what it was, TV saturation. And yet the people going door to door, the people sharing science overcame those who played to the fear of losing police services, fire services, education services. So it's an example of our power. And too often we're deflected by the headlines and the corporate media that makes us feel small, unimportant, and ineffective. We just need to look around. That's why it's so great we're doing this gathering this evening to connect with each other, to draw strength as women marching in Washington and Monterey and around the country and around the world will make connections tomorrow from which we will all draw strength, a sense of purpose, and a sense of conviction. There may be a new president, but his tenure is limited. Our movements are not limited by time, but must be inspired by a sense of great urgency. Today, tomorrow, next week, let's grow this movement, let's grow this room to be 10 times this size, 100 times this size. It is our nation, let's take it back. Thank you.